quick question guys do you think this is a real position well i had the same question when i saw the position between two very strong players jan nepomniashi former world championship challenger and anish giri super grandmaster former 2800 and a well-known figure in the chess world yesterday at singfield cup now what is going on can white be okay can white play in this manner at all what is going on where did the fundamental principles go principles of development get your pieces out get your minor pieces out well jan bends all those rules with a beautiful game that i want to share with you all right let's start from the beginning what happened Jan starts with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. We have Nimzo, Indian, opening on the board. Bishop b4, e3, short castle, a3. There are a lot of moves here from the white side. Queen c2 being the main one. Knight f3, knight e2, bishop d2. However, a3 forces black to capture on c3. b takes c3. Now white will have inferior pawn structure here due to these double pawns on the c file and specifically the weakness of c4 pawn which will become the target of black's attack after something like the knight c6 knight a5 bishop a6 circling around this pawn however white does get a bishop pair in this setup and they will try to use that for the attack which jan makes it very obvious here with the next move f3 wanting to take control of the center white's problem in these positions usually is that they cannot utilize both bishops at the same time because if you play e4 now light square bishop ends up inside the pawn chain if pawn remains on e3 then dark square bishop would be passive so jan chooses space but we'll see here in a few moves not just space anish responds with queen e8 here instead of knight c6 i believe actually main book move is e5 which has been played many times by strong players now judging by the time here that black has only spent five minutes we could probably assume that they know what they are doing they're still in preparation here you don't just casually make a move like queen e8 within a few seconds or even a minute of thought. Queen e8, h4. Move that probably a decade or a few decades ago would be unthinkable. Okay? Classic Soviet Grandmaster would make fun of you if they saw you in the middle of the game playing the corner pawns. But neural networks completely overthrew those beliefs and actually proved that corner pawns with the help of a rook can be very annoying to handle and we'll see the illustration in this game b6 as we said black was going for the c4 pawn h5 bishop goes to a6 now i want to keep an eye here on the next few moves white has not developed any minor piece well one on c3 but the knight got captured so that's not relevant anymore zero pieces all white pieces are on the back rank which piece does white develop next if you guessed it good job it is a rook rook to a2 what happened to the principle of develop your minor pieces first i don't know i am as confused as you are but i do definitely see an idea here jan wants to go g4 and swing this rook on g2 to put it right in front of the king g5 g6 open up 8g file checkmate the king whose king is safer the ultimate goal of the castle is to secure our king right three opening principles that we know fundamental opening principles develop your pieces fight for the center secure your king castle but secure your king is an important part of the equation here if king is not secure there then is king safer in the center or on the side so is it better to castle or not to castle okay now it takes a very skilled player 
to understand these rules so deeply that they can bend it at their will. And that's what Jan is doing in this game. Knight goes to a5 to attack that c4 pawn. Does white care? Well, that pawn was a weakness anyways. All right, that's the cost of white's attack here. Queen goes to c6, rook to g2. No time to waste. White wants to keep going on the king side. Bishop takes c4, bishop takes c4, queen takes c4. And since another pawn was under attack right now, White has to defend that pawn with the knight. Knight goes back to d7. So g5 doesn't come with the tempo. But so what? e5, g6, f takes g6. This is a slight inaccuracy. Computer apparently recommends going h6, but then bishop takes, takes their queen c1 now, bringing the queen into the attack. You go king g7, takes on f7, takes on h6. This is a crazy position. Apparently, computer says that black can defend this, but it is very hard to blame a human player for not uh, running king from g8 to b7. Now, takes on g6, h takes g6, rook f3, suddenly white's king is also gonna get exposed, but white gets to the black king first with g takes h7, check there, king slides on the side, rook h2, g1. All right, you have only one defender in front of you, that is a g7 pawn, how are you gonna defend it? Oh, black says with rook, f7 nah that's not gonna be enough bishop to h6 get that pawn off the way <laughs> all right that's right double exclamation mark brilliancy here g takes h6 rook goes to g8 check now black cannot capture because white will capture back with the promotion checkmate uh, queen on g8 king takes h7 rook takes a8 so what is the material count after this craziness it is rook for knight and two pawns, all right? So white is technically exchange up here, but still material is very balanced. It's about whose pieces have more attacking potential. And I think two rooks here in the attack, supported with the queen will be a lot to handle, all right? D takes e5, knight takes e4. Apparently this is a critical mistake in the game, black would rather move move it back, but the knight just came back from f6, so I'm not sure why would that be a best move. I guess knight didn't have to come to f6 in the first place. That was the mistake. So after knight takes e4, queen goes to c1, and suddenly black has a difficulty defending a checkmate. Now rook h8 is a threat. Let's say if black plays something else, rook h8, king takes h8, takes on h6, rook blocks it, queen f8, back rank mate game over, all right? So black cannot allow that, has to block it with knight g5. No, <laughs> no, that king cannot stay safe. Rook takes g5. Let's get that knight off the way. Now, but wait, isn't there a queen h4 check? Oh yeah, white well, can block it with rook g3, but what about queen h1 check now? And after rook blocks it, taking the rook on a8. Well, what is happening after this? Now for us regular mort mortars, we could probably think that, oh, black is still material out. If king somehow gets to safety, why might be in trouble? But that black king will never get to safety. Queen to c2 check, king moves to h8, queen to g6, queen f8, e6. And now white is attacking with queen, rook, pawn, and potentially with the knight, while black will only be defending with queen and the rook. Rook to e7, rook h1, not giving a move to catch a, a breather for black here. Rook h7, rook f1, all moves made with active moves, checks, th threats, captures. Rook f7, rook takes f7, e takes f7, queen to f8, and black is technically still up some material, but I think it was Napoleon who said something among the lines that what matters the most is to be more powerful than your opposition where it matters the most. And where it matters the most right now is the king side. Okay, this queen, pawn, and knight are against a lonely queen. King is nearby, but king is only doing the damage, basically. I'm kidding, made it. 
Okay, queen f6, king h7, knight to f4, and knight is coming to e6 or g6 next, followed by the promotion. So white wins, black resigned. What a game by Jan, completely turning all kinds of fundamental principles around. But again, I think it takes a special skilled player to know and understand rules so well that they can change it during the game. I think this was a very fun game and a good illustration how dynamics between initiative and development work and really understanding these two core principles of chess can make our game better. I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. Let me know in the comments. Do subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.